12 o'clock and you are watching news analysis live on politics and business TV the top stories the federal government projects massive food price crash in January 2025 labor meets Tunubu today insists on 250,000 naira minimum wage as accountant general begs for time to refund looted funds details coming up shortly Welcome back. I am Amina Idris. And now let's start with the federal government who on Wednesday declared that with the strategic measures aimed at addressing the high food price nationwide, prices of the items would crash in the next 180 days. It said the measures which include the suspension of duties, tariffs and taxes for the importation of certain food commodities through land and sea borders as well as the importation of 500,000 metric tons of wheat and maize would tackle the rise in food prices. The Minister of Agriculture and Food Security, Abubakar Kiari, who disclosed this on his official X handle on Wednesday, explained that the imported food commodities would be subjected to a recommended retail price to maintain the required and acceptable standard. This came as the All Farmers Association of Nigeria expressed optimism that the price of staple food in Nigeria would crash should the government implement the policies adequately, stressing that in-country food production had been insufficient. Similarly, the organized private sector commended the federal government for the initiative, describing it as robust, comprehensive and all-inclusive. And now to labor matters. The Nigerian Labor Congress has said it will press for 250,000 naira minimum wage during a planned meeting with President Bola Tinobu at the State House Abuja on Thursday. The head of public affairs of the NOC, Bensing Upa, said Labor would insist on its 250,000 proposals during the session with the President. Labour leaders were invited to a meeting with the President and Fordrans of Tinubu's promise to hold more consultations with stakeholders on the minimum wage. The proposed meeting is coming about a month after the President said in his Democracy Day speech on June 12, 2024, that an executive bill on the new national minimum wage would soon be sent to the National Assembly for passage. On June 25th, the Federal Executive Council, chaired by the President, stepped down deliberation on the new minimum wage memo to allow for more engagement in stakeholders ahead of the planned executive bill. The President took the decision after receiving the reports of the Tripartite Committee on Minimum Wage from the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, George Akume. The reports which Akume received from the chairman of the Trapatite Committee, Bukar Aji, recommended 62,000 Naira minimum wage based on the submissions by the federal, state governments and the organized private sector. Labor at the close of consultations recommended 250,000 Naira, but the state's governors said they might be unable to pay 62,000 Naira. And now the former acting accountant general of the Federation, Anemekwe Nwabuku, on Wednesday pleaded with Justice James Omotosho of the Federal High Court in Abuja to give him more time to conclude the refund of the public funds allegedly looted by him and his co-defendants. 
Unwa broke and his co defendants Felix Unweke are facing 11 counts of money laundering to the tune of 1.6 billion naira. They are being prosecuted by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. The defendants were accused of committing to the act while Umwa Boku served as the Director of Finance and Accounts in the Ministry of Defense between 2019 and 2021. You are watching News Analysis live on Politics and Business TV. Still to come, Governor Ahmed Ododo of Kogi State saved 20 billion naira refurbishing 200 abandoned tractors within and outside the states. These and more after the break. Welcome back. I am Idris Amina. Now to state matters. The Kogi State Governor Ahmed Ududo has stated that his administration saved over 20 billion naira by recovering and refurbishing 200 tractors hitherto abandoned, noting that the tractors have been deployed for the 2024 wet season farming in the state. The governor's special advisor on media, Ismaila Issa, made this known in a statement on Wednesday in Lokaja, the state's capital. The governor explained that the initiative in recovering and refurbishing the tractors that were already out of use was based on the prevailing economic situation. He said he was prompted to evolve the approach by putting together a team of engineers to revitalize the unused tractors which were procured by his predecessor, Yahya Bello and given to farmers who left them abandoned in different farm settlements within and outside the states. And still you are watching news analysis live on politics and business television. We shall be going on a quick break and when we're back we'll be joined live by our guests for today in the person of Al Haji Malami Marafa Gagi, Director, National Population Commission, Sokoto, who will be discussing our today's topic. World Population Day statement. Welcome back. I am Amina Idris. Now let's head on to, the, to today's business, World Population Day. Every year, World Population Day is observed on July 11 to highlight the global population issues, including population control. According to the United Nations, the rise in population impacts, impacts employment, economic development, poverty, income distribution and social protection. The trend has a deteriorating impact on education, healthcare, sanitation, housing, water, food and energy, and to address sustainable needs, policymakers need accurate data. The world's population has officially crossed 8 billion, consequently, it will create hindrances to a more sustainable and friendly world for future generations. It will be recalled that the United Nations declared World Population Day in 1989. This unique occasion was created when the world's population crossed 5 billion on July 11, 1987. Dr. Casey Zakaria suggested the idea of World Population Day and this day was founded to address concerns related to the world's population, which includes mat maternal health, poverty, economic hardship and many other difficulties. World Population Day is a reminder to attain the goal of sustainable development in 2030 to have a, sus a sustainable and peaceful future. On the day of World Population Day, 
the United Nations Population Fund asks readers to imagine a world where all 8 billion of us have a future bursting with promise and potential. Along with providing statistics and experience to support women and girls across the world, the UN Population Fund draws attention to the advancing gender equality, helping over 8 billion people on our planet to realize their goals. Every year, they focus on different population aspects and theme that aim to address the most pressing concerns. The theme of this year's popula World Population Day is Leave No One Behind, Counts Everyone. This theme draws attention to a crucial but sometimes neglected feature of population consensus, the inclusive and thorough data collection process. This theme ensures that everyone is fairly represented in the numbers regardless of background, nationality, geography, or socioeconomic standing. According to the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, in his message for World Population Day 2024, he said, This year marks the 30th anniversary of the International Conference on Population and Development Programme of Action. It must also be the year we resolve to accelerate efforts and investment to turn its promises into a reality. Central to the ICPD program of action is the recognition that women's sexual and reproductive health and reproductive health are also tabled. And now to my guests. Good morning to you, sir. Uh, good morning. How are you doing today? Well, I'm fine. Thank you very much for having me. My first question to you today is, what do you make of this year's theme of World Population Day? Well, Population Day has mainly three objectives. It's to create, increase, it is to increase the awareness of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the community of the people, to draw the attention to opportunities and challenges, and then uh, to, to, to inform the people on the all inclusive data gathering strategies. So these are the main things. So in the in the increase of uh, I mean, in the first point as I talk about that is increase awareness how family planning, reproductive health, demographic changes, how they affect our system. Uh, I mean, our population, how it affects the sustainable development plan. So these are the things that we have to take to to to, to, to focus our attention on. Do we actually take care of our population, do we actually manage our population uh, to, to make effective use of it or do we allow, or, do, or are we careless and we are allowing uh, the challenges to, to, to somehow uh, hit us back negatively? So these are the things. Okay, so has the awareness every year changed the issues on ground like unemployment, hunger, sanitation, displacement and among many others? Uh, well, uh, you know, our, our main role, uh, our Population Commission has a constitutional mandate of uh, advising the government on population issues. And uh, if at all, the, the, as, as I talk about, if public planning is, effective, is, is being adopted effectively in our society, we have a way of checking how it is. Uh, like we conduct surveys uh, every five years, we do the, uh, Nigeria Development and Health Survey. And during the survey, we'll find out, we, we, we tell the nation, we tell everyone, we tell the government that uh, people have adopted the practice of family planning. And those that have, affected, uh, that have adopted family planning, uh, what has the benefit they have, uh, they, they have, compared to those that have not adopted it? And which, uh, those, the, uh, which group of people uh, actually do this practice? Uh, how do you understand? And then the product health issues and then also the demographic changes. All this we, we advise the government. We advise uh, agencies, all those that uh, need our assistance if they contact uh, we have we have we have provided such data. So so it's for the people to look at those data that we are we are we are providing and then see how far we have gone. How how we are performing in our, in our society. So, like that, you are saying there is a huge difference between 
those that have adopted the family planning and those that have not adopted the family planning? It has greatly helped the population of the world. Yeah, it has, family planning does uh, from from uh, just uh, at a macro level. You know very well that uh, those that do practice family planning, they have family, the number that they can take care of, they can adequately provide uh, health services, they can take care of their education, they can take care of their discipline. And uh, we have seen how the quality of life uh, they are given to their children and all their dependents, how it differs from those that have not. You can see it yourself. Yes, yes. So, accurate data is, like, getting the population accurate data is still a very huge problem. Why is this? No, it's not a problem. It is not a problem. National Population Collection uh, has a robust system of collecting data. Uh, you know, we have three stages in population uh, and, and census taken, the census, the census, the census, the census, the census and the consensus. And we have finished the stages of, of the census. We have carried out the vacation, invention and vacation. And all, 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 all the land in the country is being dedicated. Everywhere is being dedicated. No, no an inch is left out. And then all the buildings you see are numbered. We have them in our record. We have them in, the, in, our, in our electronic record. So we have a robust way of collecting data. During the census, all these uh, emergency areas are, are coded. They are given numbers. And the emergency are going to be assigned to, to all the emergency areas. And they are going to, the census is going to hold simultaneously in, in all part of the population. So, so it's, it's not difficult. Since if, if the population commission is given all what it requires to carry out the, the sunset, definitely the population commission is, is well prepared. If I may ask, what is the world population as of 2024? 2024. Well, the last time is uh, from, from uh, 8 billion. It is projected to reach 8.5 billion by 2030. 8.5 billion. No, I mean, like, as of 2024, presently, what is the world it's, population? It's, 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 uh, it's 8 billion anyway. It's 8 billion. 8 billion. With all the yes. local governments, all the people in the world inclusive. All the people is expected to, to be 8 billion. Okay, estimated. Yes. So, do you think growing population is a threat to world peace and economic growth? Population is never a threat if well managed. But if the, if the count, uh, is, if it is well managed, it's never a threat. The threat is mismanagement, mismanagement of population. Uh, everything has its own advantage, as it has its own disadvantage. Of course, uh, uh, if population is, is well managed, no matter how big it is, you see, if after all, the, the, uh, the, the command of the country can provide employment, can provide uh, security can provide enough food for its population. There is, uh, there, uh, you, you see that uh, the, the, the population, if it is very large, uh, has its own advantage. Okay? Yes. There is yes. uh, a cheap level, there is high productivity, and many things associated with that. And for smaller population, the same thing, almost the same thing, that, uh, uh, that at least it is, the, the, the major point here is management. Once we can manage our population, then it's not a threat. But if we cannot manage it, then it is a threat. Why are governments and stakeholders across the world not harnessing the huge population potentials? Uh, but, uh, if you say across all, it is not. It's not. It's, we, we, the, the, if you look at China now, do, can we say China is not harnessing the the population it has? We cannot say that because they, they have put their population into productivity, isn't it? Yes. Uh, yes. For, for, for developing countries like Nigeria or any or, or other African sub-Saharan African countries, uh, we, we fall short of managing our population effectively. And uh, that is the major challenge we're having. And uh, we have to, the, the, the countries in, the, in, the, in, the, in Africa, South of the Sahara, will, will have to use their resources uh, and then their knowledge and everything 
to make sure that their population is put into productivity. So all the people in a country will have one or one or two to do so they can help improve the country's economy and all that. Exactly, exactly. And one or the other. There is the, uh, that's why the general government is emphasizing on the diversification of the economy. The diversification that is let, let there be reduction in all aspects of human labor. And transportation and agriculture and in science and technology and that have you and there has been al haji malemi marafa gagi director national population commission sokoto and that will be the size of the program for today thank you for staying tuned i am amina idris